Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining me today to begin hearing about Wii U. I am here inside Nintendo headquarters in Kyoto in a seventh floor conference room, which, as you can see, is rather plainly furnished. But there is something here which is quite significant. These are the Japanese character for Dokso. This is a term which has guided Nintendo since the early days of the company when Mr. Hiroshi Yamauchi was president. In English, it means creating something unique. I believe when you hear from Nintendo this week, there may be several times when you say to yourself, well, that certainly is unique. And hopefully, you will be thinking of unique in a good way. In fact, this Nintendo Direct itself represents something unique because it really begins our E3 News announcements even days before our E3 presentation this coming Tuesday. During that event, we'll be focusing almost entirely on games for Wii U. So today, I'd like to introduce you to Nintendo's brand new home console, Wii U, and its new controller in a more conceptual sense. In this room in 2008, we began discussing what we should do with Wii U to meet our goal of creating something unique. And here is one of the topics involved in our discussions. Maybe this seems familiar to you. People are gathered together in the same room with friends or family, but they are not truly connected. They are paying more attention to their devices than to each other. There is an American professor who has written a book about this called Alone Together. And I think that term captures the idea. New technologies in general have made life easier and more efficient. But we have to wonder what this will mean for the nature of human relationships moving forward. So one of the challenges we set for ourselves was creating something that would help unite people rather than divide them, uniting whether in the same room or great distances apart. And this was a tool we devised to help accomplish that. It is a controller for Wii U, and it's called the Wii U Gamepad. Let me tell you how we decided on the name. In the 1980s, we began setting a home console known in Japan as the Famicom, and in America as the Nintendo Entertainment System, or NES. The controllers for previous game platforms typically had a joystick of some sort, but the NES had only a flat surface with the plus control pad. Because of this, players began referring to it as a gamepad. In any case, we decided that this name also made sense to describe the appearance of the Wii U controller, even though it now also features two stick type devices. This is probably the most obvious difference from the prototype we showed at E3 last year. That previous version had circle pads for thumb control, but we decided that this format was really more appropriate for portable devices where a low-profile form factor is important. 
Instead, here we have incorporated sticks that not only operate precisely in 360 degrees, but which also can be pushed down for an added method of control. In addition, we have also redesigned the back of the controller and the bottom layout to maximize comfort, even if you are playing for a long period of time. A couple more things. This mark to the left of the screen is the location for the NFC reader writer. You can place cards or figures on this, and relevant data will be read or written into your experience. This button can be pressed even when the Wii U itself is not activated. With the existing remote for your current Wii, you can simply turn on or turn off the game console. Beyond that, you need your TVs or a cable remote. But with Wii U, the gamepad itself becomes a fully independent infrared TV remote. Next, let me talk about some of the things that the Wii U gamepad makes possible. Last year at E3, we talked about the potential of two screens. Of course, many people already operate the two screens of the both Nintendo DS and Nintendo 3DS. But with Wii U, two screens become more dynamic because the relationship between them is not fixed. Secondly, the two screens make possible something engineers refer to as asymmetric diversity in gameplay. In simpler terms, what is being seen or even done on the small gamepad screen is different from what's happening on the big screen TV. We'll be showing you what this means for gameplay at E3 this week. The gamepad screen is also a touch screen. You can use a stylus to draw pictures or use your finger for the usual range of intuitive inputs. What is more unusual is how the two screen can work together in unprecedented ways. This kind of gaming feels unique. The Wii U gamepad also senses movement with motion and gyro sensors. This is particularly important for people somewhat unfamiliar with gaming. By using more intuitive motions to control a game, players of all skill levels can better play together. And of course, all this is enhanced because of the improved graphics processing power of the hardware, something you recognize beginning at the E3 presentation on Tuesday. Also, consider that with a screen in your own hands, you don't need to be sitting directly in front of your TV. You might also find yourself in any comfortable spot anywhere in the living room. As we mentioned last year, sometimes you can continue playing on the gamepad even when the TV screen is being used for something else. This might occur with more casual games, when you are in the middle of your Wii Fit routine, or when you intend to spend many hours deeply immersed in your game, and others aren't willing to let you have the TV to yourself for all that time. And in any of these situations, not only will you see 
high quality console graphics on the big screen TV, but those images can be displayed on the Wii U gamepad without delay, something no existing handheld game devices can do. Wii U will support all your previous forms of Wii control, including the Wii Remote, the Nunchak controller, and the Wii Balance Board. For those who are mainly interested in multi-platform games with more traditional means of control, we will also offer the Wii U Pro Controller as a separate peripheral, which is lighter and maybe more attractive for longer, more intense forms of gaming. Overall, some people may wonder if Wii U is a simple evolution of Wii or something entirely different. I think maybe the best answer is both. In 2006, we changed the way friends and family interacted in the living room. One way we thought about this was turning the living room into a kind of playground. And that play could also be expanded to distant locations. While many Wii games were single player, probably the most memorable experiences came when people would play together. Today, Wii U does what we did only better. And at the same time, it is also something entirely new. Not only can it connect people in a better way within the same living room, but it also connects people living room to living room in a much more compelling way. By this point, I think maybe it's better to show you an example rather than continuing to explain. And in the spirit of creating something unique, I think maybe the following is not what you normally imagine when you hear the term game video. Whoa, oh no, zombies. Zombies are after me. Oh, oh, you won't think I'm so tasty after this bullet sandwich. Oh, okay. All right, zombie boss, you're going down. Let's see you try breaking down this door. Oh, why did I think that would work? I'm out of bullets. Uh, my bear trap is useless. My pushes are ineffectual. No, no, no. Oh, man, he got me again. <sighs> If I don't beat this zombie boss, I'm gonna end up talking to myself like a crazy person. Right, non-specific action figure? Hmm? What is my mood? It's complete despair an option. SOS. Any clue how to beat the scary zombie that breaks down doors? Post. All right, maybe these comments by peeps in the same situation as me will help. Me too, what do I do, boo-hoo. I almost lost three survivors to that monster. I thought I almost had a heart attack when he burst in. Guess I'm not alone after all. You know what I mean. Tad, tad, tad. This is Todd, the non-killing zombie killer. Knock, knock, who's there? A polite zombie who doesn't just break down doors when he wants to come in. In fact, he calls first. I'm kidding, it's me, Warren. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I take you saw my post. A little bit, you know, I feel for you, Todd. That zombie boss is a pain in the capital B. But don't worry, I'll be over soon to help you beat those games as per usual. Um, actually, I think my buddy OctoG123 has it figured out. Guess I have all the help I need here, Warren. So, you don't need me anymore? Uh, nope, see ya. I'm so sad. Excuse me, miss. Miss, I, I, I noticed you're drinking coffee also. Coffee drinkers have a lot in common. All right, Octo G123, let's see if your plan works. Your scanner reveals pockets of antibodies located on the zombie swollen glands. Gross. Let's do this. Back to game. 
All right, come on, come on, come on. Swan gland. What am I even looking for? Get, no, get away! Oh, didn't work. I'm gonna call Octo G one two three and get to the bottom of this. Okay, okay, come on, come on, come on, pick up. Todd, my man, how's the zombie killing business? Lousy Octo G one two three. Call me Grandpa. That makes me uncomfortable. Says the guy who talks to an action figure. Um, you said on Wii U that I should use my scanner to locate the antibodies in the zombie swollen glands, but I didn't see anything. Have you upgraded your scanner ding-dong? No, I didn't do that. Okay, awesome. Thanks, OctoG. Of course. What are best friends for? I am your best friend, right? Yeah, you're my be best friend. Yeah, hey, so you covered up his ears. Gotta go. Bye. <laughs> All right. I promise to tell him about us. Okay, updating scanner. All right, let's see if this works. Oh, there it is. Yes, okay, zombie boss, the only one who's gonna fight it is you. Yes, I did it. I beat him, I beat him. Did you hear that non-specific action figure? I beat him, I beat him. Yeah, oh yes, all right, finally, yeah. Oh, man. I think you may agree that was a little different. I hope you liked it. At the end, I think you saw a lot of me characters come out, saying different things and milling about. That was the Wii U menu that you see when the system is first powered on. Our development teams have been calling this me wara wara since early in development. In Japanese, we use the term wara wara to describe this kind of gathering. Roughly translated, it refers to the general noise and commotion created by such a crowd. The me's you see there are not random. Your me will be there, along with every person who has an account on your own Wii U system. In addition, your friends are there. And finally, also in the scene are people from your country or who speak your language who are also playing the games represented by the tiles. The speech bubbles represent actual communications from all these real world players. When you launch the Wii U menu, the Wii U gamepad in your hands will have a familiar lineup of icons for games and built-in applications. But on the TV screen, you will see tiles for games that players around the world are playing most, including games you may not even own. The me characters gather around the games they are playing, and the views of the Wii U gamepad and TV are interchangeable. What's going on here is what we call Miiverse. Clearly, this is a word we've invented, a shortened way to describe a me universe, a place where me's from around the world can meet and connect. It's a network communication system that is as native to Wii U as is the Wii U gamepad. This plaza scene is the first thing displayed on the TV when you turn on your Wii U. Miiverse can also be activated anytime during your game without the need to terminate play. Certainly, the idea of a video game network is not new. So let me focus on a 
few of the elements that we feel make Miiverse distinctive. In typical fashion, communication between the Mies can occur with simple text messaging. However, we believe the touchpad on the Wii U gamepad will make some difference. Not only does the touch screen make the typing simpler, but you also may find that this screen right in your hands makes reading messages easier. Maybe I'm not the only person who sometimes finds it difficult to read the channel guide on the TV from across the room. Miiverse also makes it simple to communicate with handwritten notes, even doodles. As technology has advanced, handwritten messages have declined. But if you used Flipnote Studio or Swapnote, you understand that what you physically write or draw can naturally convey stronger feelings than what you simply type. With Miiverse, you can even add image of facial expression to help communicate your emotions. Mies have access to a wide menu of rich content, including the ability to post screenshots from their own gameplay, and even transmit game content they have created themselves, which can then be added to others' gameplay. All of these aspects of Miiverse, which I've described, are native to the Wii U platform and can be accessed by all games directly from the home button. But of course, game developers will also be able to use Miiverse functionality directly in their games if they so desire. And they already have many ideas. While we will work to prevent spoilers that might detract from your game experience, the purpose of Miiverse is to add not only information, but also a new degree of empathy between players. Furthermore, Miiverse does not require the use of your big screen. In fact, we consider the small screen on the Wii U gamepad itself as a social window, fully capable of linking player to player, living room to living room, sharing across both time and space. By this, I mean that not only does Wii U offer players a way to connect across great distance, but they can also enjoy a sense of connection even when they are not playing at the same time. Of course, just as with Wii, players will be able to compete with others online, but with the Miibers, even in a single player game, even where players are not competing or cooperating at the same time, even when the games are not designed for online interaction, Miiverse can connect your living room with those of others, regardless of space or time. Because the key components of Miiverse are browser-based, these social connections will eventually be possible outside your home, away from the Wii U itself. We won't offer this immediately at launch, but later, Miibas will be available from your Nintendo 3DS, your PC, or any web-enabled mobile device. Previously, we've said that we expect several generations of Nintendo hardware will be linked by the Nintendo network. In a similar way, 
the social elements of Miiverse are also designed for Wii U, Nintendo 3DS, and future Nintendo devices. Let me close with one more thought. In 2006, I first talked about the three conceptual pillars which could be altered by we. First, the relationship between the family and the game machine. Second, the relationship between the game machine and the TV. And third, the relationship between the TV and the internet. The Wii U gamepad makes each of these connections even richer. That because the second screen on the Wii U gamepad can perform different functions, even at times independent of Wii U itself. We showed video chat functionality as well, but there is also an internet browser that allows you to share what you are browsing on the personal screen in your hands with others in living room using the television. You can input text and read text on the small screen in your hands, and when watching the videos and photos with everyone, you show content separately on the TV screen. Normally, the browser screen would show the same thing on both the Wii U gamepad screen and the TV, but you can close the curtain over the TV screen so the content can't be seen until you open the curtain, adding some entertainment elements to browsing itself. This is another feature that was prepared based on this concept. Creation of Miiverse was done with the same thought in mind. I often quote something said by Mr. Miyamoto, well known around the world as the father of many franchises, such as Mario and Zelda. His belief is that a great idea solves the multiple problems at the same time. We believe this describes the Wii U gamepad. It is an idea that has the potential to solve several of the problems Wii U was designed to address. We believe it can help solve the issue of alone together. We believe it enables the sharing of more smiles, more laughs, and more empathy. This whether at home or connected to the homes of your friends. We believe that six years ago, we introduced a new form of together. If there's a way to describe we you in a similar sense, it's this, together, better. Even when you are playing by yourself, the Amoebas can connect you with your friends, family, and other players around the world who are playing the same game you are. Even with no one else in the room, you won't feel alone. And perhaps most of all, we believe we you remain true to the promise of Dokso. We hope when you experience it firsthand, you will agree that it represents the creation of something unique. We have a busy week ahead, including our on-stage E3 presentation, when we'll continue to focus our attention on Wii U. But don't worry, we also have plenty of news about Nintendo 3DS to deliver during other upcoming opportunities. Thank you so much for spending this time with us today. And I plan on guest tweeting all through E3 on Nintendo's official Twitter account. And I hope 
you'll be able to join us to follow our E3 presentation on Tuesday when we'll begin giving you concrete examples of video game experiences you've never had before. Thanks again.